Well, we just came off of a series of fighting the good fight of faith. Remember the series we just came off of? We got to fight the good fight of faith. And, and Paul says, hold on to eternal life and confess a good confession. Amen. And, uh, and that was a great message. Now, I'm, I'm, hopefully I'm in another series here. And the title of this series is Don't Worry, Be Happy. Don't worry, be happy. Uh, remember that Jamaican song? Yeah. Don't worry, <laughs> be happy. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, I don't know if he was a Christian or not, but that would that would work for the my Christian theology. How about yours? Uh, I mean, that could be our Christian theology. Don't worry, be happy. And uh, and I'm going to say this that uh, I ple I believe there's a place in God that we can walk in where we don't have to allow the worries of the world to get on us. Amen. Amen. Worry is basically thinking on the problems of life until it moves on us in the feelings of fear and despondency. Amen. Anybody ever think on the worries of life? Anybody ever think on even the world has worries? I'm going to talk about that. The, the world worries about things. But you know, as Christians, uh, we need to not worry because worry is fear and fear can take the joy out of our Christian life. And really, God wants us walking. He wants us being happy Christians. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, don't worry. Be happy. So, so we don't need to be worrying. Why? Because, because God is our Heavenly Father. I mean, I, mean, I mean, once we have Jesus in our life, Jesus unlocks... Hey, hey I'm talking to somebody today. Jesus unlocks all the blessings of God for us. Jesus unlocks all the grace that we need in this life. Jesus is the reason for every season. Amen. Can I get a witness in the house today? And I'm telling you, you don't need to worry about your life. And we're going to talk about that because Jesus has some things about worry. And, uh, and he talks about how not to worry. And we're going to focus on this because I think you know, as Christians, we shouldn't be worrying. And we know that worry is not good for us. Amen. And even the world knows that worry is bad. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I, I, I think that we can, I think worry can, sends people into mental uh, asylums. Uh, worry can, can keep us, you know, locked down in our house. Worry can keep us from giving out like we need to. Worry is, is not, should not be a part of the Christian's life. Amen. And so, so let's look at Matthew Chapter 6, verse 25. And Jesus is talking about this. This is really tied in. He says, therefore, uh, it, it's tied in. Before that, he talks about don't let money rule you. In other words, money can't, don't, doesn't need to be your God. God, you can't serve God and money. Amen. In other words, money serves us. We serve God. So he was talking about that because I think sometimes that if we think we have enough money, we're not going to have any worries. Oh, I'm preaching today. But just because you got money in a bank doesn't mean there's millionaires out here. There's people that have millions of dollars, but they, they still walk in worry because they're afraid they're going to lose it. They're afraid they're going to go broke. They're, they're, they're afraid, you know, or that they're not going to get ahead of the next millionaire. <laughs> You know, they're not going to... Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? So money is not your answer. Even though we think if we just have all the money, then we wouldn't have any worry. But what happens if a disease hits your body? All the money in the world, if it's a, a disease that science says that cannot be fixed by the medical doctors. Remember Steve Jobs? He had lots of money, but he died of cancer. Right? He, had, he, he was a multi, multi-millionaire, probably a billionaire. He made the Apple phone. But he ended up dying in his mid-50s 
of, of disease. So, so, so money is not the cure, and we think it is. We think if we got money, boy, I have no worries. Give me a billion dollars, pastor, and I'll smile the rest of my life. I don't know about all that. I don't know about that. I'm telling you, what we need is peace in God. That's what we need. We need peace in God. And I'm going to say this to you this morning. You're going to have to fight for your peace. Amen. Why? Because the enemy's doing everything he can to get us out of peace. The enemy's doing everything he can to get us to focus on the wrong things in life. And if we focus on the wrong things in life, it's not going to bring joy and peace in our equation. It's going to bring grief and misery. Have you ever been there? And so here in Matthew 6, uh, uh, here Jesus is saying, Therefore I say to you, after he just said, don't make money your God, he says, Therefore I say to you, take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment or clothing? So he's saying here, he's saying here, he's, he's not saying that you don't need to think about eating. Amen. Sometimes we get in church, we miss breakfast, and we think about what are we going to eat for lunch. And hopefully that doesn't come in in the middle of my message because all you're going to be thinking is about a hamburger. Amen. <laughs> and, and so I'm, he's not saying don't think about eating. He's, he's, what he's really saying in, in some translations, he says don't be anxious in your thinking about eating or what you're going to wear. Don't have an anxious thought. Don't, don't think, oh my gosh, where am I going to get the money to get food or how am I going to be able to live? He, he's saying don't, don't let an anxious thought be hooked in with how you think. Amen. Can I get a witness in the house today? We, we, because anxiety, have you, anybody ever feel, dealt with, deal with anxiety in the house? Yeah, I think, I think we all deal with it at times, don't we? And, but but, but we got to learn, and you can learn how to walk in the, the peace of God. I like what it says in the Amplified. It says, it says here, therefore I tell you, stop being worried or anxious. This is Jesus now. Now, if Jesus is saying to us, stop being worried or anxious, that means we can stop being worried and anxious. Jesus would not give us a command if we could not fulfill it. <laughs> Can I get a witness in the house today? So, so Jesus would not tell us to do something that we cannot do. Am I, is, is that true? And so then Jesus says here, Therefore I tell you, stop being worried or anxious, perpetually uneasily distracted about your life or what you will eat or what you will drink nor about your body as to what you wear. Is life not much more than food and the body more than clothing? So we see here Jesus saying, really, what he's saying is our relationship with God and the body he gave us on this earth to have authority is more powerful than the sustenance that we receive every day to live. Amen. Can I get a witness in the house today? And so, so that's what he's saying. He's saying that really our life in God is much more valuable than what we get, the material things that we get in this life. Amen. Amen. And so, in other words, our life is more precious and, 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 and more precious to God than the things. And, and so I like this because even Jesus when, when I, I will talk to you about what he talks about food here in Luke 4, 1 and 4. And Jesus was, was uh, baptized in the Jordan River by John. And then he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And it's interesting to me that when he was led into the wilderness to be tempted and tested of the devil, that he fasted. Why would he fast? And, and, and be under, it seems like, man, you're being more misery having the devil attack you and being in a fasted state. He, he fasted because he had to unhook from his body telling him what he needs to be doing. Amen. See, your body makes a great slave but a terrible master. 
And you can't have your body controlling you or telling you what to do. No, you tell your body what to do. Sometimes your body will say, uh, hit the snooze button and sleep a little longer. As, <laughs> my, my man says every day. Charlie man is saying every day, man. <laughs> we just want to sleep in that bed a little bit. Am I talking to anybody today? Does anybody like to just sleep in bed just a little bit longer? Why? Because the body says just a little bit more sleep. But, but then you, on the inside, you say, I got to get up. Yeah. I got to get the day going. I got to start moving forward. I can't just lay here in bed all day long. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? I got to get up, you know, make that cup of coffee and get rocking and rolling. Amen. And so, you know, you got the spirit that's, 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 that's urging us to keep moving. Amen. And so, and, so, and so we see here that Jesus, it says in Luke 4, 1 and 4, Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing. Think about this. Jesus ate nothing. And afterwards when they had ended uh, he was hungry, and the devil said to him, notice it was right at the end of his fast. And, and the devil always attacks us at our weakest point. And he's always waiting. Have you ever noticed when you're tired or weary, it's easy for you to say the wrong things? It's easy for you to get upset. It's easy to do the wrong. Anybody ever been there? When we get weary, when we get tired, the enemy presses on our flesh. And he, says, and he says this, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him saying, it is written, Men shall not, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Now see, now there's nothing wrong with bread. There's nothing wrong with eating. That's good. But you know what's more powerful than eating bread is eating the bread of life. Amen. The Word of God is more powerful uh, than, than, than eating regular food because man shall not live just on regular food. We live by the Word of God. That's why you're here this morning. You need a rainbow word. You need a word in due season. You need a phrase that I might say under the anointing of the Holy Ghost to set you free, to bring you in more freedom. And I don't know about you, but I need to learn to walk in more freedom. More freedom, more peace. And none of us have the corner on the market of truth. We're all growing. We're all moving toward. I'm not where I used to be, but I'm not where I need to be. Amen. See, the enemy will start talking to you and say, man, you're not where you need to be, man. You should be further down the road. Thank God you're where you're at right now. Thank God that you're serving God. Thank God that you're in church. Amen. I know, I know people that are backslidden in their walk. Not going to church anymore. Out in the world. And, 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 they're, and they're in the devil's territory. And they need to get out of it. If you're watching online, you need to get to church. You need to get into an atmosphere that will bless your life, glory to God. You need to get involved. Church was never meant to be done online. Amen, amen, amen. There's still churches today, I hate to say it, and I'm a pastor, and, I'm a, uh, and I love the church. There's churches still today that have not opened because of COVID. They're still doing online church. Oh, my Lord. Why? Fear. Fear keeps us from doing the will of God. Can I get a witness in the house today? Fear. The devil wants to put fear in us to keep us trapped and keep us from doing what God wants us to do. And I'm not going to fear no little virus. My Jesus is bigger than any virus that the devil puts out. Glory to God. 
He's either going to deliver, I preached this before, but he's either going to deliver you from the virus or he's going to deliver you through the virus. But either way, he will deliver you. Can I get a witness in the house? And the, then the fourth man in the fire will be with you. If you find yourself in the fire and you won't have a smell of smoke on you. Can I get a witness in the house today? Amen. So we see here that Jesus fasted, went without food to receive spiritual victory in the wilderness. Most Christians have more than enough to eat. Amen. I can get a witness in there. Most Christians are doing well in the eating department. We had, we had a love feast last week. And I'm telling you, the, we, we, got, uh, we got reports back that the food from the visitor, glory to God, that the food was, uh, that they ate was one of the best meals that they've had in a long time. You know why? Because the food was, a lot of it was made by Yin, and she has special ingredients that she mixes in the food, and that's called love. Amen. 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 And I'm telling you, when love is added into the ingredients of life, can I get a witness in the house today? It makes life that much more special. It makes life taste good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Somebody better be glad that they came out today. See, you're, you're tasting and seeing that God is good. Amen. And so Jesus fasted. And so, and so most Christians have enough to eat. But what we should be craving for, more than just food or clothing, I like the word raiment, more than just that, we should be, we should be desiring a radical change by the Spirit of God by chasing after the Spirit of God. In other words, I want to come in to the church service and I know I, I may come in one way, but I want to come out a, a different way. Amen. I may come in a sort of maybe so-so blasé, but I want to leave up and excited about my walk with Christ. Yes. Amen. And that's what, that's what the Word of God will do. It will change the perspective of how we see things. And most of us, what we need is we don't need a physical change. We need a perspective change. Isn't that right, James? That's right. James was talking to me the other day. He says, I think you like to preach. I, you enjoy preaching up there, don't you? I said, man, if I didn't, I'd be in trouble. <laughs> Glory to God. It's the grace of God that's on my life. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, I, I better enjoy it. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. It's God's grace, and I'm a grace gift to you. <laughs> Amen. That's what the Bible says. I'm a grace gift to you. So hopefully, as you're sitting out here, and you're drawing off the grace gift, that, you know what you're doing? You're unwrapping the blessings of God for each one of you. Amen. Because God's Word is God speaking to you. And as I minister from the word of God, it's God speaking a rhema word to you. Say, I believe that. I believe Bringing you more into freedom in Christ. I like what the apostle Paul said, glory to God, pertaining to eating. He says in Romans 14, 17, for the kingdom of God is not eating or drinking, but righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So we see here that, that, that Paul was really talking about, if you'd study this out, he was saying that food is not the big thing in our life. It's really the kingdom of God is the big thing in our life. And the kingdom of God, and he said, don't use your food. Don't eat that, that would hinder somebody else's faith. That's, that's why I don't drink alcohol, because I don't want to bring somebody down. And he said, he said, it's better off that you don't drink or eat a certain food that would cause your brother to stumble. And then he said, but the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And that's what we need to be walking in. When we understand our right standing with God, peace and joy is the byproduct of that. Yes. Can I get a witness? Yes. Remember last week I talked about you're forgiven. Yes. I'm telling you, we are forgiven 
creations in Christ and we have access to all the blessings of the Father. Now let's look back at, 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 at Matthew 6.25. It says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on, is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment? You, you see, I, see here what, what Jesus is saying here. He's saying here, don't be so focused on the bling bling of this life. Don't be so focused on the stuff. Don't be so focused, but, but, but be focused on God. Be focused on, on your relationship with him. And, and, and see, I'm going to say this to you today. The world operates in fear and greed. Can I get a witness in the house today? But the church should operate in faith and love. Amen. There we go. So the world operates in fear and greed, and that should not be a part of the Christian's makeup. No, the Christian makeup is love and faith. Amen. That's how we operate. We operate in the love of God, and we operate in faith. Faith is believing that God is a big God, that he can do anything, that he can work miracles in our life, no matter what it looks like in our life. Yes. Faith pulls in the blessings of God in our lives. And that love sustains all those blessings that God gives us. Because we don't get haughty or high-minded when blessings are coming our way. We stay humble and thankful. Yes. That's how you keep the blessings. You stay humble and thankful when the grace of God is on your life. Say, I'm staying humble. humble. Got to stay humble, amen? That's how you keep the grace of God in your life. The world will try to convince us that we're running out of resources. Have you ever heard that? We're running out of resources. We're running out of, uh, you know, the, the, the world, there's, it's overpopulated. Too many people in this world, and, and we're going to run out of resources. We're going to run out of food. We're gonna, have you heard that one before? We're, we're going we're, we're, we're gonna to, uh, you know, the, 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 the people of this world, is gonna, you know, the planet's going to be destroyed. I heard one politician said, this planet will be destroyed in 10 years because our ozone layer is dissipating. And, we were not gonna, and we're not gonna, this world's not going to be lasting more than 10 years. I'm thinking, what planet did she come from? Oh, you hear what I'm saying today? And what is what does the world do? And what does a lot of the politicians do? They try to preach fear in us. The the, the news tries to preach fear. Global warming. Global warming. And then they find out the ice caps aren't 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 melting, they're growing. Then they say, uh, climate change, climate change. (laughs) Is that right? They just change the narrative. They flip the script. <laughs> right? Why? Because they're trying to get us in fear. Fear of, of and what it is. It's the worship of, you know, Mother Earth. And, and, and you got people in the world that worships this earth. And no, we worship God. Amen. The earth is here to serve us. We're not here to serve the earth. Can I get a witness in the house today? And so we're not running out of, you know, God, God, God's a big God. He created this world and it's no way that it doesn't matter how many people are, are uh, born on this earth. It doesn't matter. God will always have resources for every person on this planet. So we see here the world is fear driven. And if we're not careful... Uh, we will take on the mentality of the world and we'll take on this mentality, oh my gosh, uh, we're going to run out of food. We're going to run out of resources. We're going to run. No, you can't run out when you got God, El Shaddai, El Shaddai the God that's more than enough. Can I get a witness in the house today? And I'm going to say this. The world says that we're destroying the planet by our gas fumes. <laughs> Amen. They even say some of the gas from the, from the, from the cows are, kill, are destroying the ozone layer. Uh, Have you heard that one? Yeah. I'm scratching my head. Do you think God knows a little bit more than we do? Yeah. And, uh, 
And, and so what they're saying, they're, they're, they're saying that, 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 that this planet can be destroyed by man. I want to make a, a bold statement today. Man cannot destroy this planet. God will not allow man to destroy man. God, this planet will not be destroyed. Why? Because God will intervene. Amen. I read my Bible and there's going to be a thousand years where we're going to be reigning down here with Jesus and we're going to be reigning on this earth. And it's not going to be all destroyed. Can I get a witness in the house today? This, this is called the millennial reign. I, I, I've been, man, God's been really just stirring me up to preach about end times. Talk about what we're, and I don't know about you, but, but, but we need to get excited. Because we're going to be reigning with Jesus in the millennial reign of Christ for a thousand years down here on earth. We'll have our glorified bodies then. It's going to be amazing. Amen. And we're, going to be, and we're going to be judging angels. Glory to God. We'll, we'll be ruling and reigning with Jesus down here on earth. And it will, be, it will be perfect, glory to God. Almost perfect. Almost perfect. You see, the, see, see, see the, the world will say this planet's going to burn up. But it, 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 it will, but it's going to be because God causes it to burn up. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And in 2 Peter, it says here, 310, it said, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Amen. But don't get worried. <laughs> don't be worried. The Bible says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will never pass away. And guess what? If God's word is in you, guess what's going to happen? You will never pass away. Somebody say, I'm an eternal creation. creation. Glory to God. We are eternal creations in Christ. We will not see death as in, as in when we die, it's, we just transfer our citizenship from earth to heaven. Glory to God. Amen. To be absent from the body to is to be present with the Lord. But can I give you one even better than that? Where two or three are gathered, there he is in the midst of us. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So, so we, need, we need to not be worried about what the, what the world worries about. About this planet going down. I like what it says in Psalms 46, 1 and 3. It says, God is our refuge and strength. Very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea and its waters roar and be troubled, through the mountains shake with its swelling, Selah. God is with us. It doesn't matter how bad it looks or how bad it might be out here. God is with us with us. I'm telling you, when we get the fear out of us, we will truly be living this life that God intended us to live. A life like heaven on earth. Amen. In Hebrews 2, 14, 16, because I, I believe this, all fear, and there's people that have fears. Amen. There's, 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 there's a fear of flying. There's, there's, there's fear of, uh, of people. There's fear of germs. There's a lots of phobias out here. Even my wife, Yen, would be nervous sometimes and we're going to fly out somewhere. And, but she would, she would stand on a scripture that Jesus talked about uh, in, in one of the Gospels. And Jesus said to the disciples, let us cross over to the other side. And she would just quote that, we're going to cross over. <sighs> To the other side. <laughs> Sometimes you need to quote the word of God. No matter how the devil is making you feel about the circumstance. Anybody afraid of flying in here? No. Glory to God. Oh, we got one man. Amen. Amen. <laughs> You're, you'd rather drive, right? Okay, praise God. Amen. But I'm telling you, we're going to get to a place in God where we'll be flying with no fear. Glory to God. Amen. I like this because, because all fear is connected to death. Can I, can I preach to somebody today? All fear is really, it's rooted and grounded into death. Death really just means separation. 
It means that we're afraid we're going to lose something. Whenever you're in fear, you're afraid you're going to lose something. It, come on, am I preaching to somebody today? It's like, I'm going to lose something. Uh, uh, whenever you're in fear, uh, you, I'm gonna, uh, and fear the, the, the greatest fear is the fear of dying. But as Christians, we should not be afraid to die. Because it's only a transition unto the glory of God. And so it says here in Hebrews 2, 14 and 16, it says, In so much then as children have partakers of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through a death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is, the devil. This is talking about Jesus. Jesus had the power, uh, destroyed the one that had the power of death, that is the devil. And he released those who fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For indeed, he does not give aid to angels, but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. So we see here that, that Jesus took the keys of death and hell from the devil. And Jesus gave us eternal life when he presented his blood to the Father in the Holy of Holies in heaven. And we have eternal life today. We don't have eternal death. Amen. Can I get a witness today? And we should not fear death. We should have no fear of it. Amen. Because why? Because we know who we are and we know whose we are. So when we, when we feel like that, 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 that the enemy is trying to take something away from us, that's what gets us worried. I'm going to say this to you today. The reason why some of us are still dealing with worry is because we're holding on life too tight. Oh, I'm preaching today. We need to stop holding on, on, on this life uh, so tight and start holding on to Jesus in a greater way. Jesus puts it this way. He said, for whoever will save his life shall lose it. So who's ever trying to protect their life, trying to keep their life, trying to make their life work in their own power and in their own strength. I'm preaching to somebody today because sometimes we can rely on our own abilities, on our own ways, on our own smarts. Am I talking to anybody today? We, we, we think, oh man, I, I've been around the block. I, I've, 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 done, I've done some, I know how to do things. Yeah, but you still need God in your life. Just because you got some gifts and abilities, just because you can do some things, you still need God to wake you up every morning that you get up. If it wasn't for God, we wouldn't even be breathing. Can I get a witness in the house today? Glory to God. So we, we need to make sure that, that we're not uh, allowing the fear of death to get into our life. We, we, need to, we need to be like Jesus. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it. So if you're trying to hold on to it, you're going to lose it. But whoever will lose his life for my sake, sh the same shall save it. So what is, is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying, stop holding on life so tight, trying to make this life work for yourself, but let it go and let Jesus take the reins in your life. Listen, uh, you know, we're not going to, we don't need to worry about not having food uh, because of the promise of the Father that we can stand on that He will take care of us if we need food. Don't discount the miracle working of power of God in, the li in your life when you have a need. See, one, since if you have needs, don't discount what God can do when you're dealing with a deficit in your life. God can do the impossible. I like a promise here that talks about eating. How many people like to eat in here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm glad I'm talking to the right crowd today. And here it says here, the Lord does not let the righteous, Proverbs 10, 3, the Lord does not let the righteous go hungry, but he thwarts the craving of the wicked. That is a promise that you can stand on that you'll never go hungry. God can bring water out of a rock. God can rain bread down from heaven. God can fly in quail without an airplane. Did he do that for the Israelites? Did he bring quail over and drop that quail down? 
He can get you quail. Why? Don't discount the miracle working power of God when you're in your need. God can, that's, that's the greatest level of God's grace is when you're in the greatest deficit of your life. I'm preaching to somebody today. The greatest level of God's grace in your life is when you're in the greatest deficit in your life. Some of us, the reason why we're dealing with worry because we haven't got close enough to God to experience who God is yet. Because when you get close to God, you will not worry about anything. In other words, don't worry, be happy. So, so I like Psalms 34.10. It says, the lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Are you a seeker of the Lord? <laughs> Glory to God. You will lack no good thing. Thing. Now let's, let's continue to read. It says here, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you much more valuable than they? Can any of you by worry add a single hour to your life? Jesus is saying here, He's saying some things here. He's saying here, the birds don't save. You know, we save in bank accounts and we, 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 we save money and for a rainy day. And he said, the birds don't sow or reap or store in barns. But he said that, that God loves the birds. And see, if the, God can take care of his creation, the, the birds and, 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 the, and the animals of this planet, how much more can he take care of us? Think about that. How much more can he take? And then I love this. He says, are we not more valuable than the birds? I was witnessing to Yin's uncle when I, we were out in Florida. And I was witnessing about the Lord Jesus. And I was telling him about how, how, God, how valuable people are. And we're more valuable than animals. And he said, that's debatable. And he, did, he was really, he's a Buddhist. And, and he, was, he was debating the fact that, that animals are on an equal plane as human beings. If that's the case, why do we eat animals? Why, if, if we're on an equal base, why don't we eat each other? Why don't we be cannibals? Are you hearing what I'm saying? No, we're not on an equal base. Animals were meant to serve us. We're not meant to serve animals. You got one of the poorest nations in the world, India. And they have a religion that cows are their uncles and aunts. And the cows, you know, will roam around in India. And if you're driving a car and, and a cow stops in front of you, you got to stop and be courteous to the cow. And, 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 and then that, I heard one story of a cow just laying down and the guy just turned off his engine. He, the, the American was in the taxi. He said, what are you doing? He said, the cow laid down. We can't do anything right now. <laughs> Think about that. Is that ignorance gone to seed? Animals aren't greater than human beings. We are made in the image of God and in his likeness. Animals are not. And the world will try to make us as equal with animals and we're not. You know, I, I sometimes I, I, I watch TV and I see these commercials and it shows like these real sad animals. And it says, will you donate to help an animal today? Anybody see that? And, you know, they're taking what the, what the, what the Christians does, feed the, the poor and the people of the poor world. You know, you have, you have commercials and you have ministries that feed the poor. Now they're saying, we need to feed the poor animals. I'm not against animals. I'm, I, I love my dog, glory to God. But if it's between me eating and my dog eating, I'm going to eat first. Can I get a witness in the house today? So he says here, look at the birds. So, we, so what he's saying is, don't focus so much on your need, but focus on something else. You see, worry is focusing on the wrong things of life, focusing on the problems of life, but we need to refocus on something else. 
And so if you refocus on something else, then worry will dissipate. Jesus is saying, look at the birds and focus on how God loves the birds. And as we focus on that, we can get a revelation. Well, if God loves the birds and takes care of the birds, surely God will take care of me. We, we, he, what he's saying is, God does love the birds. He loves the animals, glory to God. But he loves us much more. Yes. Can I get a revelation in there? So when we're feeling lack in our lives and, and, uh, and we're feeling this lack, uh, we need a, I would have to say, when you're feeling lack in your life, go bird watching. Any bird watchers in that house today? Yeah. I love birds. And sometimes I'd be sitting in a car and I would just, and I'd be thinking about the Lord and the Lord would just show a bird, a beautiful bird, a red robin. I love the colorful birds. The black birds are okay. But I love, I love the blue birds and the red birds and, and eagles, glory to God. I love all kinds of birds. I, I, I'm a bird man. Anybody like birds out here? If you're not, you're, you need to get saved all over again. <laughs> Amen. You need to be bird. So I'm saying this. When you're feeling stressed out in life, go bird watching and look for birds that like to feed. Why? Because it will give you a revelation that God is with you. I love that song, and I believe it may have been inspired by what Jesus said. Look at the birds. Uh, his, his eye is on the sparrow. Anybody ever heard that song before? His eye is on. I would love to sing it to you. But, but, I, I, but I'm just going to read one of the, uh, the lyrics here. Not all the lyrics. It says, why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow. I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free, for his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Amen. Glory to God. His eye is on the sparrow. <laughs> I can't get the tune. <laughs> and I know he watches me. <laughs> you know, some of us, what we need to start doing is singing a little bit more. Amen. You may not have a singing voice, but you still can sing to the Lord. Amen. And I'll tell you, I think some of us in our misery, I, I'm talking to somebody today, some of us in our misery, uh, we need to start singing a little bit more. Can I get a witness? His, if his eye is on the sparrow, then his eye, <laughs> sing it, brother. <laughs> and I know, I, I'm going to have to get him up here. No, I'm kidding. But, amen. And so I remember this, that I remember that when I was, I, you know, I came out of a divorce many years ago. I'm on my second marriage, glory to God. And, um, and I got married young in life. And I didn't even listen to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit was telling me I wasn't aware that that, that wasn't the right person for me. She, he was trying to warn me, but I didn't know how to hear from God. And so, but I ended up getting married. But it was a, it was a short um, uh, marriage. And within five years, it was a divorce there. And I remember that I was, I was broke and I, uh, I moved back in with my mom. I was 27, I think, at the time. And uh, I had lots of bills. And I remember that I had a desire to go to Bible school. And so I said, man, I want to go to Bible school and I want to learn more about God. And uh, plus, there might be some pretty Bible ladies over Aww. there at Ramah. And I was single at the time. Maybe, maybe somehow God can do the hookup. And uh, so anyway, I ended up, you know, finding out that, a, uh, that I was in the jewelry business and the manager that hired me in the jewelry business a couple times over here in Virginia Beach. I was hired twice in two different jewelry stores by the same guy. He ended up in the Midwest. I found I don't know how I found out about it, but I found out he was in the Midwest uh, in Wichita. And I called him up. I said, do you need somebody to work for you? Because I'm headed to Oklahoma. And now Wichita is a state next to Oklahoma. He said, yes, I could use you. Matter of fact, I will, uh, I, I will pay you more than what you're working right now in Virginia Beach. You come move out here. And what he did for me, he said, you come move out here. I'll train you and then I'll send you to a store right next to the school you're going to in Oklahoma after you're done being trained. And I'm like, praise God. And he said, not only that, 
um, you don't even have to get an apartment down here. You can live at my place rent free. And I'm like, God, wow, this is amazing. His, if his eye's on the sparrow, he surely watches me. And so I, I ended up driving over there. I just had my clothes and my convertible. And I ended up staying at his house. He trained me because we had to learn how to design jewelry and create jewelry and all this. And, and, uh, and, so, and so I lived at his house and he would cook at night, you know, because we would get off and say, and he would cook like steaks, food. I ate better there than at my mom's house. Aww. Mom, nothing. I, no. I, well, almost is better. Almost is good. I'm out of the will. I'm out of the will. And so, and so I ended up there. And then my boss says to me, I don't even like being in the Midwest. I'm, I'm actually going to leave this, this. And he had, he, had, he, he had a good relationship with the district managers and all that. But he said, I'm going to make sure you're in Oklahoma. And he said, I'm going to send you over there. And I'm going to have the company pay for your moving expenses. I'm thinking, my Lord Jesus, how, how much better can that get? I get into my apartment and I have my clothes and I'm in my apartment in Oklahoma and I find myself, I don't have anything but my clothes and I'm sleeping on the floor and I'm thinking to myself, I need to get some stuff in my apartment. I, don't, I, I have just very little lighting. I need some lamps. I need some pots and pans, some cookware. I don't have anything. So I, I thought, you know, who needs God when you got MasterCard? Now, I didn't think that way, but a lot of times we think if we got MasterCard, who needs to master Jesus? No. Right? So we use MasterCard, right? And I remember that I went, to, I went to Walmart and started buying all this stuff. And while I was walking around Walmart, I felt like I was grieving the heart of God. No. And like this is like, like I was almost like sinning. I'm thinking, I'm in Walmart. <laughs> I know that they put out the small guy out of business. Is that the reason why? No, I'm kidding. But, uh, but, but then I ended up taking the stuff home and I felt like I did something wrong in the inside. So I said, okay, God, you tell me to take all this stuff back. So I took it all back, returned it. Didn't know why. And then, then within two or three weeks, God moved on different people's hearts. Now, I never told anybody I needed anything. And they started giving me stuff. And there was this one family that was moving out, moving out of, out of town because they just graduated from Rama. They said, we have all these pots and pans and stuff. We have too much stuff. Do you need any of this stuff? And I said, yeah, I think I could use some of that stuff. <laughs> and, so, and, so, and so I got that. And I remember, that, uh, I remember the third day that I was there, uh, before all this ha happened, uh, there was a, a hide-a-bed couch that was being pulled out right under my apartment. And I looked at it and I said, that's my couch. I was in faith. And I knocked on the door to a lady and lady, I said, are you getting rid of this? Said, oh, yeah, I was going to give it a goodwill. You want it? I said, sure, I could take it. Yeah. And they helped me take that hide a bed couch up to the third floor. That was my first piece of furniture. And then, then the last set was a missionary that was leaving. And, and, and the missionary came to me and said, I heard you just moved in. Do you need a bedroom suit? And I didn't have anything in my bedroom. I was still sleeping on the hide a bed couch. I still had pots and pans and all that. And that was the last week. Can God take care of you? Yes. Can God take care of you? God was showing me that, you know, even if my eye is on the sparrow, my eye is on you, glory to God. Amen. So we got to get the revelation that whatever, when we start, where God guides, He provides. Amen. Where God leads, He feeds. See, see, I'm going to say this to you. If God guided you here at Exceed Life Church, then this is going to be the place where God blesses you. Where God blesses you. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? Where He guides, He will provide glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So we got to get a revelation here that, that God is in charge. And if He's in charge, He's enlarged. In our lives. God cares for us no matter what's going on in our lives. Amen? Amen. So we got to get that revelation. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Jesus, I'm, trying, I'm trying to figure out if I want to stop here and go to the next level. Um, 
Let's, let's just look at, let's look at, uh, let's look back at Matthew 6, 23. It says, I say to you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, that your body, what you shall put on, is not life more than meat and the body more than food. Glory to God. So we got to keep walking in faith in God no matter what. Amen. Now let's drop down to this. It says, when you, it says here, why take thought of raiment, clothing, verse 28, conceal the lilies of the field and how they grow, the toil not neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Therefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So now he's now now Jesus is saying, don't only just look at the birds of the air, don't just look at what he can do with the birds, but look at what he can do with the flowers of this world. Look at the flowers and how how beautiful the flowers are. And he's saying here that even the flowers are more beautiful than how we can dress up. He's 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 what he's doing is he's contrasting that with Solomon, and he's saying Solomon was decked out. And Solomon had, was decked out. He was a king, the wealthiest king. No matter how decked out Solomon was, the flowers of this world is more decked out than that. Can I get a witness in, in the house today? And so we need to refocus, stop focusing on our lack and start focusing on the beauty of God's world. Glory to God. And so worry depends too much on our ability instead of God's possibility. What I mean is that we can depend too much on ourselves and not enough on God. This is where we need to get God involved through prayer so that he can help change things. See, prayer, I want to say this, prayer is the currency of blessing in our lives. See, you're only one prayer away from seeing your blessing come into your lives. Look at your name and say, I'm one prayer away. See, see, the, see, see, if you got the power of prayer working in your life, then I would have to decree to you that you don't have any lack in your life. Because prayer will get rid of lack in your life. Can I get a witness in the house today? Prayer is the currency of the blessing in this life. In Philippians 4, 6 and 7, it says, Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So we see here that, 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 that in Philippians, Paul is saying to the Philippian church, he's saying to us, don't be anxious for nothing. But he says, if anxiety is coming into your life, if worries come into your life, he said, in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Prayer and supplication and petition with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And, and once you make your request known to God, then and you give it to God. See, prayer is giving your problem to God and receiving the promise of God. I'm preaching to somebody today. Prayer is giving your problem to God and receiving the promise of God in prayer. And when you receive that promise in your prayer life, it should make you happy. You should not walk away from prayer more depressed and despondent. You should not be walking away from God presence in a negative attitude. No, it, you, every time you go, you may go in prayer in weeping, but weeping may endure in the night, but joy comes in the morning. You may come in with a burden on you, but when you get into the presence of God and prayer gives the problem to God and receives the promise of God in our lives. Can I get a witness now today? I like what it says in 1 Peter 5, 6, 9. It says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him. Notice it says, humble yourself. See, it takes humility to come to God and ask God for things. 
See, see a, a non-humble person says, I can do it myself. I don't need God. I'm, I'm talking to anybody today. People of the world don't think they need God. People of the world think that they can do it on their own. That it's, it's their own power that gets them what they need. But really, we really, it's God's power that gets us the blessings of God in our life. So he says, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Put yourself under God. Casting all your care on him. Casting it. You know, any, any fisher people out here, any people like to fish, and you ever take that, uh, that, that fishing pole and you cast that line, Anybody, any fisher people out here? We got a couple of hands, amen? And you, and you cast that line out and, you, and you, you cast it as far as you go. That's what you need to take, do with your problems. You need to do it like a fisher pole. You need to cast it away from you, glory to God. Cast it as far out, as far as the east is from the west like your sins. And he says, eat for he cares for you. Be, I love this, casting all you care upon him for he cares for you. You know God cares for you. God cares for you. He watches over you. And, and He cares for you. That's the reason why we can rest in the promises of God. Then He said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So what he's saying is, he's saying that even though we're learning to cast our cares, even though we go to God in prayer, have you ever went to God in prayer? You let it go. You feel good at that moment. And then if you walk away 15 minutes later, that worry tries to come back on you. <laughs> have you ever been there? What do you need to do? Run back into the prayer, prayer room. And, and you get to pray again and cast your care. Amen. But you need to pray the prayer of commitment that you're not going to take the care any longer, that you're going to cast those cares away from you. But the enemy is going to try to come back. He comes back as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But, but it says here, resist him. you got to resist fear. you got to resist anxiety. you got to resist these things. They're trying to get you fretting about life in general, glory to God. And he says here in Matthew 6, 31, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we be clothed with? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. So what is he saying? He's saying, take no thought saying. Okay, that's a good, that, that's, that, there's some good points here. In other words, the enemy will try to bring thoughts to us. And he, he's going to say, you're not going to make it. You're going down. Uh, you're, 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 you're not going to be able to pay your bills. And these thoughts will come in your mind. You can't keep thoughts from, from flying over your head like birds flying over your head, but you can keep those thoughts from making a nest in your hair. Wow. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? You can't keep negative thoughts from coming, but you, you can change what you think on. Yeah. And he says, take no thought saying. What the enemy wants us to do is he wants us to think about the negative and express the negative out of our mouths. Yeah. Can I get a witness in the house today? Don't allow the enemy to get you saying, I don't know if I'm going to be able to. How are you doing today? I'm making it. You need to be more than just making it. I, I'm trying to make it work. Uh, are you hear what I'm saying? No, no, you're not making it. You're, you're, not, oh, you're not dying. You're thriving. You need to start speaking life out of your mouth. Don't allow the enemy to get you to think the wrong thoughts Get you to think the wrong things. You know, I, I think about uh, Martha and Mary and, I, and what the enemy will try to do is he will try to get us to think that God doesn't care about us. When we're dealing with our deficit and our shortfall, the devil will always try to make you think God doesn't care. Doesn't he make you think that, oh, God cares more about this person than he does about you. He, God doesn't really care. No, God cares about 
if he cares about the birds, he cares about you. And I remember Martha, she, she, she invited Jesus and, and, and his disciples into the house. Martha and Mary was there. Remember Martha was cooking and Martha went to Jesus because she was doing all the cooking and Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet. You remember that story? And Mary was listening to Jesus' words and Martha says to Jesus, Jesus, do you care that I'm doing all the work? Do you even care about me? And Martha was doubting Jesus' care for her. And really what she needed was, she was low on the word. If she just sat under the, with Mary, sat down, guess what Jesus would say? Hey, let's all get up and, do, and, and get the dinner together. Yeah. Jesus would have probably had everybody help. Martha would have even had to do any, none of the work, or a little bit of the work. And, but, but, but Martha was, no, the work is more important than the word. I want to say this to you today. The word of God is more important than the work. And you, if you don't have the Word of God, you're not going to be able to do the work of God. Yes. Can I get a witness today? It's the Word of God that will sustain us, that will energize us, that will get us into a place of doing the work of God. Yes. And remember Jesus? He would do the work of God, but then the Bible says He will go back into a place of prayer and spend time with the Father. He always had to go back. Well, Doing the work of God's good, but you've got to still get back in and get the Word of God, get the presence of God to be able to sustain you in this life. And I'm going to say to you, if you're worrying, if you're fretting, you haven't spent enough time in God's Word. You haven't spent enough time in worship because you can't spend time in the Word and worship and, and not be happy in this life. Can I get a witness in the house today? Did you receive it this morning? Let us bow our heads in prayer. Father, I just thank you for your mercies and your goodness and your love. And I thank you, Father God, that we're going to change our focus from, from, our, from the problem to the promise. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, that, that we are going to learn to cast our cares on you because you care for us. You care about us. And Father, I thank you for the people here in this audience. I thank you for those watching online. And maybe you haven't given your life to Jesus. You haven't made Jesus Lord of your life. Maybe you're dealing with all kinds of issues. Jesus wants to be the Lord of your life. He wants to take that burden off your shoulders of living this life for yourself. So if you're ready to receive Christ today, just pray this simple prayer and mean in your heart. Say, dear God, I believe Jesus, you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you were raised from the dead for my justification. Today, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. And Heavenly Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.